Setting up your Trezor wallet. There are multiple ways, four ways, to set up your Trezor wallet. You can do it online at Trezor Wallet, using their Chrome extension, using Trezor Manager for Android, or offline with Python tools. I'm going to be doing it online at Trezor Wallet. Here I am at trezor.io backslash start. When you get to the start page, it tells you there's three simple steps to do before you set up your device. You should learn how the pin works. The pin protects your Trezor from unauthorized access. Use at least four different numbers. Try to avoid simple pins such as one, two, three, four. During the Trezor setup, you will enter your new pin twice. Notice that the numbers shown on the Trezor change between entries. Two, understand the recovery seed. Recovery seed is the 24 long recovery phrase with which you can restore your wallet in case of theft or loss. It is absolutely crucial to write down the seed. The recovery seed will be generated for you during the setup of your treasure. It says to never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online. Keep your recovery seed in a safe place. And three, if you want, you can stay updated about Trezor News. You can stick in your email and click on subscribe and continue. You can go ahead and view their warranty information if you want. I'll click on done. Let's go. Now I'm redirected to wallet.trezor.io. This is the page that you want to go to to regularly access your wallet. It's loading. Trezor Wallet is starting. In order to set up and use the Trezor Wallet, you're going to have to install the Trezor Chrome extension or the Trezor Bridge. The Trezor Bridge is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Notice that if you are using Arc Linux, you'll have to download it through the Arc user repository. I'll go ahead and click on Install Extension since I am using Chrome here. I'll add the app to Chrome. Once it is added to Chrome, it'll start loading the wallet again. Now I'll plug my Trezor wallet into my computer. This is my first time setting up this Trezor wallet. When you get your Trezor wallet, it does not come with firmware installed. So the first thing you have to do is install the firmware. I'll click on Yes, Install. It's downloading the firmware. Updating firmware, I'll click continue on my Trezor. Allow my Trezor to update the firmware. Now it's installing the firmware. And it tells you to confirm the fingerprint that you see on the screen with the numbers on your Trezor. So make sure that the numbers on your Trezor do match the numbers that you see on your screen. Then click Continue. Now my firmware is installed. Update was successful. I'll unplug my Trezor and then I'll plug it back in. The wallet loads up automatically and you're greeted with the Welcome to Trezor Setup screen. First, I'll put in a device label. I'll call my wallet Trezor Wallet. 
Then I'll click Continue. This brings up the pin number option. The treasure will show nine squares, in which case you have to match up those squares with the ones you see on the screen. I'm going to try pin number 4114. So I'll click the center, then the top left, top left again, and the center again. And it says that it's too easy to guess, so I'm going to have to choose a different pin number. It has to be totally different numbers. You cannot use the same number twice. So I'm going to select 8. I'll select the center left. 6, center right. 4, center. And then 2, bottom right. And then I'll click Enter. I'll re-enter my PIN number. You can see that the numbers have changed on the Trezor device. I'll click the bottom right for 8, center right for 6, bottom left for 4, and center for 2. Then I'll click Enter. Now I have to write down my recovery seed. So using the little recovery seed booklet that came with my Trezor, I'll write down my words from 1 to 24. The first word is try, so I'll write that down in my recovery seed book, try. Then I'll click next on my Trezor device. The second word is scout, so I'll write down scout in my recovery seed booklet. The third word is useless. I'll go through and record all of the words into my booklet, one at a time. Now I'm done recording my 24 words. It will go over and show me the 24 words again. Make sure that you have recorded down the 24 words properly. If you don't, you won't be able to recover your device in case of loss or theft, or if you have to update the firmware. Now that I'm done recording my recovery seed, it asks me to enter my PIN number. I'll select the top right, bottom right, center left, and top left. Then click Enter. Now it will load my wallet. You'll see two accounts on the left, account number one, which is the SegWit account, and under that, legacy accounts. Here's the transactions page where you would see transactions if you've had any. I'll click on Receive. This is the address that you would use to receive payments. You can click on More Addresses to get other addresses that are tied in to this same account. You can send payments to any of these addresses and it will show up in the same account. I'll click on, I'll click on Send. Here you can enter an address, an amount, select a fee, and then Send Bitcoin. You can also click on Add Recipient in order to add contacts. Save contacts into your Trezor wallet to make it easier to send coins to them in the future. If you have coins in your primary account, you can click on Add Account to add other accounts. 
I'll go ahead and change Bitcoin to the Bitcoin Cash Wallet. A warning comes up showing you that you are using the Bitcoin Cash Wallet. Ensure that you do not receive Bitcoins to the Bitcoin Cash Wallet or try to send Bitcoin Cash to a Bitcoin Wallet. It reloads my wallet for me. And again, this is the same as the Bitcoin wallet. You can get your receiving addresses here, your wallet addresses, QR code. If you click on send, you can send Bitcoin Cash. I'll go ahead and change the wallet to the Dash wallet. It reloads my wallet into the Dash wallet. Again, receive, send, and assign and verify option. I'll change the wallet to Litecoin. Now it's loaded my Litecoin wallet. Again, the same as the Bitcoin wallet, it has legacy accounts and SegWit accounts. You can receive and send payments. I'll change the wallet to the Zcash wallet. Here you can see you can receive Zcash, get more addresses. You can send Zcash, put an address, an amount, fee, click send. You can also add recipients, contacts, and there's also the sign and verify option. If I go ahead and change the wallet to Ethereum wallet, it's going to redirect me to my Ether wallet. I'll click on go to my Ether wallet. My Ether wallet loads up. I'll click on Trezor and then connect to Trezor. The export public key page comes up. I'll go ahead and click on export. This will bring up my Ethereum addresses and balances. You can view more addresses by clicking on more addresses. I'll select the first address and unlock your wallet. From here, I can enter my address and send Ethereum or view my token balance or send tokens. If I click on view wallet info, again, I'll click on Trezor, connect to Trezor, export my public key. Select my address, unlock your wallet, and here you'll see your receiving address and your QR code. You can also check your Ethereum and token balance. If I want to access the Ethereum Classic wallet, I'll change the network from Ethereum to ETC. I'm going to go ahead and click on Send Ether and Tokens. Then I'll select Trezor and connect to Trezor. Export my public key and again select my address and unlock my wallet. Here you can enter in an address to send ETC to, an amount, and send your ETC. You can also view your balance, your address, and your tokens. Again, I'll go into View Wallet, export my public key, select my address. And here you can see your QR code, address, balance, and token balance. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped. And thanks for watching.